In this video, uh, I'm going to cover a formula that I've kind of developed over the years for making projects. Um, yeah, as a creative person, your currency is the currency of ideas. And don't underestimate how powerful ideas are, because let's face it, everything was an idea. Um, this jump was an idea, that wall, me, okay, all ideas at some point. And one thing that's very pleasurable for me, and I'm sure you'll have fun with this too, is just having ideas. Just think up ideas for projects, okay? Um, one thing that just popped in my head that's so random is just thinking about when we go to sleep, we lay in a bed and we pretend to go to sleep before we go to sleep. Does that seem weird to you? I don't know. But anyway, but the point is, is that it's the same as having ideas. If you're, if you're worrying about, oh, how can I have these ideas? Just, yeah, just, just try. Just pretend to have ideas and maybe then you'll have some ideas. So anyway, this formula, okay? Um, before I can tell you the formula, I need to break down the component elements of the formula and then at the end we'll wrap it up, we'll put it together and you can hopefully find that cool formula way of devising your own amazing photography projects. So, some photography projects people make are what I would call very aesthetic-led projects, okay? These are the kind of photo projects you see by like adventure travel photographers who are sharing their holiday photos, okay? They're very beautiful landscapes, they're very nice, but there's kind of, there's no depth to them, okay? And because of that, yeah, simplifying it, just because you go to some location, that's not an idea. Other photographers will think about a certain camera or a certain sort of visual aesthetic, it kind of inherent in the medium that they're using. And you'll always see, you know, you'll always see that young photographer with the large format over their shoulder and they're walking around. You're saying, well, you know, what's your idea? What's your project about? And they'll say, oh, large format. OK, so again, be careful with that because a medium on its own is not an idea. There's an ongoing trope in portrait photography that you see time and time again. And essentially it'll be like a portrait series, often in the studio and it'll be sort of making very large claims about revealing the identity of a certain group, a political group, subcultural group, whatever, but their identity, oh, this is an amazing project, it's all about their identity. And you look at the photographs, and it's just headshots again and again of people staring into the middle distance, not emoting, and that's it. And the weirdest thing of that is, is that if you look into sort of the study of kind of cultures and civilizations and subcultures and all kinds of things, so much that's interesting about a group of people, it's kind of all tied into their day to day and what they do and just pulling them out and sticking them there and cropping in tight. So again, um, you might have a subject like a group of people say, or even a person you want to shoot, but a subject alone is not an idea. On the flip side of that, you have concept-led projects, okay? And concept-led projects, well, let's just simplify it. Conceptual photography has been huge in the UK since the 90s. It was kind of the dominant prevailing force in kind of high-end fine art photography. It's the kind of work you're going to see generally at lots of big kind of photo festivals and galleries around London. Um, but let's, let's just say, remove the word concept, conceptual, just say idea, okay? And the thing is, with lots of conceptual projects, the, the projects are so idea-led, the, the, the actual aesthetic, the way it looks, it's an afterthought, okay? And it might be because they've had a concept and they're just trying to put some illustrations to it or some kind of pictures. It might be because they have no interest, really, in the aesthetic kind of nature of photography and trying to make something look cool. Um, and sometimes there might be a reason why there's no aesthetic to the project but it can be very uh, difficult to engage with, um, particularly for people who aren't initiated into that world of conceptual photography. Um, I went out on Twitter saying, hey, share conceptual projects with me in photography that have zero aesthetic value. And obviously it's a bit awkward because no one wants to be like, yeah, this work looks really bad. <laughs> but for some photographers, that's actually part of their work as conceptual photographers. They're not really interested in the aesthetic. I can't remember the name of the book, but I saw a photo book once and it was, I think, 200 ways of making one piece of flat pack furniture wrong in a big book. And obviously for that photographer, an artist, that was the, that was the thing. Um, I think maybe for me, not so much, but you know what? That's cool. Everyone's got their own, own ways, uh, ways of doing stuff. Um, one thing I was shown on Twitter was work um, John Darwell's discarded dog shit bags. 
and it's just loads of photos of dog shit bags hung around in kind of countryside and trees and whatever. And again, this is kind of, we're getting into the realm of kind of conceptual photo series. But even with that work, I'd say there's some aesthetic value to it. Now, where I'm going with this is that you can take the best elements of an aesthetic led project and a conceptual project and put them together. You're going to merge the ideas of concept and aesthetic. And this, as I said at the start of the video, you do this at the beginning, okay? You think about this at the beginning. So even before you pick up a camera, you're setting yourself on a path to hopefully something great, okay? So how can we do this? Well, you can split this formula on its head. So to begin with, let's say you have a great idea, you have a great concept. So now you need to think about that concept and work out how best visually to represent that. You want that medium to marry to the idea in some way, okay? If you're a film director, you're making a movie, do you know what I mean? There's going to be very specific aesthetic choices about the types of shots you use, the way it's filmed, and the way you tell the story. It's the same with photography. And sometimes a harsh truth can be that maybe photography isn't even the best medium for your idea and expressing it, okay? So I'm going to give you a really good example now of a project I feel where the photographer had an idea and they developed a really cool um, aesthetic to go with that idea. And that project is Lewis Bush's Metropole. So Lewis Bush grew up in Peckham in London and saw kind of massive changes to the area, sort of uh, gentrification unfolding, other kinds of things. And he felt kind of more and more alienated in the place where he grew up. Once the mother city at the heart of a vast global empire, London is now the dominion to a new world power which has risen in its stead. Subject to the flows of global finance and whims of markets, the city has become an investment opportunity for multinational developers and overseas investors. Metropole records the brutally disorientating effects of this by documenting these legions of new luxury blocks as they are constructed and occupied. Multiple exposure photographs are combined of appropriated, repurposed photographs taken from the billboards of the developments, alongside extensive research into the property developers behind these schemes, including their extensive use of opaque offshore financial structures and unaccountable political lobbying. I know Lewis loves science fiction, okay? And if you look at his photographs in Metropole, the way they look, you know, it's wild. It could be something out of like a Fritz Lang film. It could be something out of Dark City. They're very, they are visually disorientating. And as you go through the book, it gets more and more kind of like wild. And yeah, that's because he's managed to successfully merge this idea of kind of alienation, of the sort of change and whatever, and his personal feelings, how, how that makes him feel. And that comes through in the photographs. Now, some photographers might approach it the other way around, okay? Let's say they have a medium they want to use. Let's say me. I, I wanted to do a project on infrared. I had a, like 50 rolls of colour infrared film. So I started to research historically why that film was used and picking out different photographs um, that then I could springboard off from books and be like, well, this could be a whole idea like this. This could be a whole idea like that. So that's one way of doing it if you're coming from the idea of having a medium, then going into the concept. Another thing that can happen is, let's say you're a really established photographer, you've already developed a very distinct individual visual style. People like that style. People want to see that style. So now you have to think about a way of having a concept, an idea that fits with that visual aesthetic that you already have. And I think a great example of that is Sally Mann's Battlefields. So obviously Sally Mann is well known for the wet plate collodion process in all her work. A lot of it obviously highly personal about her family but she did a project called Battlefields in the early noughties and it was all to do with Civil War battle sites. Although Mann started the series in 2000, her process is grounded in the 19th century. She used the wet plate collodion technique whereby a glass plate is coated with a light sensitive collodion solution, exposed in a camera and then immediately developed. Invented in 1851, wet collodion negatives were in wide use by the time of the American Civil War. Each print demonstrates man's distinctive use of the wet collodion technique, embracing what the artists call the angel of uncertainty. Man allows the flaws in her negative holes, streaks and pore marks caused by improperly applied collodion, as well as dust embedded in the surface of the negatives, to take on new visual resonances, resembling, resembling bullets flying through the air or fiery waves devastating cornfields. So yeah, you could have your cool 
visual style, your cool aesthetic that you're kind of really tied to or you really want to use, and then start to research an idea, a concept that will fit it. Or you can have an amazing idea, an amazing concept, and now you're going to try and work out the best medium, camera, technique, whatever it is, to then marry to that idea. Um, it's not easy. I guess if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But for my money, even before you begin a project, the best thing you can do is think about that. Think about how you're going to approach it, even before you pick up a camera. And hopefully that will put you on the path to some great work.